We're now ready to run a full test and I've got my Gmail logon information ready. So the fields I have inside of the form here, um, actually down here to authenticate and to get into Gmail have been populated with my email uh, for Gmail, my password for Gmail. So we're gonna go ahead and run this now and then we're gonna see if it comes in inside of Gmail. All right, and we're gonna go to contact. Okay, and we can see at the bottom down here, 1256. So when we go look at the Gmail account, we should see something a little bit after. So I'm gonna do Brett Romero, I'll do Brett at tester. This is a test. Submit this. So the breakpoints are still there so that we can see the name, the email, the message body is all coming through. So I'm gonna let that run down to the SMT part, SMTP part. So just move this. And then our breakpoint's gonna hit here. We'll do a little bit of walk through that. And actually, I am going to go ahead down to the disconnect just to make sure. We hit that, we should be fine. Okay, so let's see here. We have SM, yeah, that's the issue right there. It should be SMTP, so SMTP, just like we have in the client name. Let's go ahead and run this again. And I am going to remove that breakpoint, and we're just gonna hit our disconnect to make sure that went through. And then we can check our Gmail. All right, so back to contact. I'm just gonna do the same parameters. So tester, this is a test. And submit. All right, so no errors, and that seems as though it went through. We'll just disconnect. Here's our redirect. Let's go ahead and go back out, make sure that just brings us back to the form. Okay, so let's go look in Gmail now. And you can see the time here is 12.58. And there we are, so 12.57, testing from app. Let's click this open, and there it is. So this is a test, and that went through. So we have a full functional loop at this point. All right, back in our app, we're gonna take care of this message. So I am going to stop this, and what I'm gonna do is comment this part out uh, so we don't continue sending messages because we're just going to work on this one part of uh, getting the message not to display all the time. So inside of our view, let's go down here. Let's see, we have posted message coming off of the model. If we're gonna hit this only when we post, then why don't we just put the message there and we can go ahead and overwrite this. Um, we're not really using view data. So let's take this right here, put it there. So that should work, right? Let's go ahead and run this now. And we should see that the message is not there initially because we initialize it with that string, that empty string. All right, so I hit contact and just type in anything. And submit. So let's see here, we have a value. Let's go ahead and run out. And we have no message. All right, so what is going on? Let's check our on get to see what the value is there. Where is it getting changed? Okay, so we're gonna fill this out again. And submit. So here's our post. Now we're gonna go to our on get. And let's look at posted message is empty. So this is a class level variable um, posted message. Why isn't it sticking? So the reason why is because we're on two different streams. We have a request that we come in as, we set on the request, now we come out on the get, which is a response. So the variable is not gonna carry across, the same variable is not gonna carry across across those two different directions of the HTML request and response. That's happening because we're doing a redirect, right? We're redirecting back out into the response. So this is getting hit and basically it's a whole new day though. So all the variables are getting reset at that point. So we need a way to ensure we know when we're gonna get a post back. And one way to make this very simple and get the job done is to simply just add a parameter here. And that will go like this. We can do post back equals one. Then down here, what we can do as well 
is just check if that's there in the query. So we'll do a request, because again, we're on the request, and query string. So we're going to see has value. If it does have a value, we're gonna go back with this. Query string. And we're gonna look for PB equals one. So we're gonna do a value contains PB equals one. And we can close this and have a conditional here. So we can use either one of these and we'll have to set them here because again, they're not gonna carry across if we set them up here. So this isn't doing nothing. We can go ahead and remove it. And we'll just take the comments off. And that should handle it. And this right here is because it's actually a um, taking in a parameter, not an indexer, so like that. And then it should only be two parentheses right there. Okay, so going back into the layout, we can take both of these, since we have both, and make use of them. So we have a view data, and we were using posted message and save that. And this is actually gonna need an ampersand. Okay, so let's run this now and see what we are gonna get. All right, so we're gonna contact, and we can let that run out. Let's see if we have a message there. So no, that's clean right now. And just put in some data, and submit. So we can remove this. And there we go, so they are there now, which is good. That's exactly what we want. Let's just do contact again, and they go away. So perfect. So that will conclude our contact form submission using Razor Pages project.